Since the Apple Studio display arrived on the scene, many have asked why it doesn't have 120Hz refresh rate, mini LED and more tech inside, so in this video we are focusing on just one iCave answer and it's possibly the most detailed one we've ever received. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell. And for this video we're going to put the, uh, the question right here on the screen throughout so that you can actually... Um, just follow along. I think it's going to be easier that way. Ali Zain Nurani asks, I cave answers. Hi Dave, great videos, love the content. Hope to hear an answer from you soon. As you mentioned in one of your previous videos, Thunderbolt can be used to drive monitors with 4K plus resolution at 60 plus hertz. I think this is definitely possible, but would require Apple to create a custom signal that would go through the cable. I've based this on Linus's statement where his Pro Display XDR review, he mentioned that Apple is achieving 6K resolution by sending two DisplayPort signals through one cable. Number one, if this does become the case for the next Pro Display XDR, how do you think it will affect the costs? There might need to be custom hardware in the monitor to interpret the signal. As we already know, the Pro Display XDR is extremely expensive. Do you think this could be enough for them to increase the price even more? So we're going to take this one before we move on to the next part. Um, I think the Pro Display XDR has got enough margin in it for them to support any custom hard they hardware they would need to put in there. And we've seen with the Studio Display that Apple is quite comfortable with putting an A-series chip inside, which they can then use to kind of decode signals. And I think uh, something along the lines of an A14 or an A15 would absolutely be powerful enough. If it came to it, they could even put an M1 in there, which has got the... Uh, the decoder engines built into it and when they can put that into a mac mini for 6.99 we're talking about maybe 10 percent of the value at retail of the pro display xdr panel prices are coming down i think that would be reasonable however i do think as well that i know when linus was talking about the pro display xdr he said it's around about 13 gigabits of um bandwidth that are being used to go and power this display at 6K at 60 hertz. USB 4 Thunderbolt can carry up to 40 gigabits per second, and uh, that basically means that there is enough bandwidth there to double the res uh, to double the display rate if needs be, or you can increase your pixel density or your resolution, whichever makes the most sense. There is enough bandwidth there, but I think it's 20 in each direction normally, so it might be that they would need to basically send both signals in the same direction and that might mean custom ports at the other end. What we would also need is to make sure that the sending monitor can send stuff quickly enough but what if Apple decided to do something along the lines of DLSS where they send a lower resolution signal and then it gets upscaled intelligently using neural engines at the other end that might be a potential solution to this. You know if you're sending just your text for example for a uh, on-screen text to be rendered at the other end that would be absolutely fine because you don't need to send every pixel for the text from the feeding computer you could basically send it as text and say this this is where it needs to go and it can be resolved at full resolution at the other end so at this point i guess we're talking about something close to an eGPU um, built into the display or something that acts in that way at least so you're actually sending stuff to be processed at the display end. That is a possibility. Number two, also, what do you think the compatibility of this monitor would be as it requires for the computer to be connected to have support for this proprietary, uh, proprietary signal? Yeah, this is the difficult part is that you need to be able to send stuff. I think this might be a display that would be kind of Mac exclusive. Um, so although it kind of reduces the potential functionality of it. I don't think there's that many PC users who are buying Apple specific displays to go onto their PCs because the vast majority of the additional stuff that's in there is not going to be specifically useful to PC users. Is it one of the best displays on the market? Absolutely. Um, certainly at the price point. You know, Apple talked at the time about studio displays and kind of reference monitors being incredibly expensive, which is very true, and they're incredibly expensive for the color accuracy and everything else. Studio display is not as color accurate as a $40,000 uh, reference monitor, but it gets you a lot of the way there. Uh, it gets you pretty close for... 10% of the price essentially. Um, so I think there's uh, there's certainly a market out there for it, but I think if they wanted to make it exclusive to Mac users, I would understand that too. 
Number four, also, do you think if Apple goes with this approach, the Pro Display XDR sequel will be able to be used by Windows machines? So we've already kind of touched on that. Yeah, I think that it might end up being something that is more exclusive to the Macs. It might be that you can use it with a Windows machine, but it can only support 60 hertz, or you can use it with a Windows machine and you can run it at a lower resolution with the high refresh rates, but maybe not all of the above at the same time. That would be my thoughts. Although there's a potential that that DLSS style of thing could upscale content and what you're doing on screen intelligently. Also, what do you think is the likelihood of this theory? It's a bit of a long shot, but it's totally possible considering that Apple loves proprietary standards, Lightning, iMessage, etc. There's also the fact that there's no way to get a standard 4K plus signal at 60 hertz plus refresh rate. This is kind of like Apple's old monitors. They had three cables coming off them so you could get the higher refresh rate. Um, just to clarify that, they didn't have three cables coming off. They had a dual link DVI um, for the 2560 by 1440, I think it was, uh, for the 30-inch cinema display, but they that was kind of split out with USB as well, so that came separately for the hub that was built in. Um, I don't think it was multiple cables specifically for signal, but I could be wrong on that. They had no choice but to do it that way. Obviously, current Apple would never do that in their wildest dreams, but they could do something similar with the cables internally. Yeah, I mean... Sta uh, proprietary standards is something that Apple does and it could be that you need some kind of an external box if you want to use it with um, a Windows PC. Perhaps you have some sort of decoder box that you have to add in there that basically funnels all the signal down to a single cable. Maybe it would appear as two portrait displays or two uh, smaller resolution displays to a Windows system that are kind of butted up together to create a single physical display. That could be the other option, potentially. Also, do you think that this solution might require an Apple Thunderbolt Pro cable that they sell, as each byte of data will be valuable, as they will require high-quality ca cable that can consistently give the signal without interference? Or do you think this cable will be hardwired into the display? Uh, I think, if anything, it will be hardwired into the display, just like the power supply is into the uh, Apple Studio display. Yes, I know you can remove it, you have to pull it really hard, but it's not designed to be. And I think uh, in this case, it would make sense purely for Apple so that they know that the right cable's being used, so that they're not trying to troubleshoot people having issues like that. Um, would also love to hear your opinion on this theory. As far as I'm aware, I haven't heard anyone come up with this theory. You also did ask if the bandwidth of HDMI was higher than Thunderbolt's. HDMI 2.1 does have higher bandwidth than Thunderbolt at 48 gigabits per second. That's mostly due to it having a larger surface area, being able to squish more copper cables into it. Uh, yeah, so that's something that I wasn't aware of. And I mean, it's a potential, but I don't see that Apple would be doing it. But let's be honest, there are cust uh, there are companies out there that are doing 144 hertz displays, I think, at 4K. 4K at higher resolutions can be done. I don't know the exact technology behind it, but I'm sure Apple will come out with some kind of way to make a lot of people angry about the fact that they've managed it um, because they'll make it different somehow and it will just annoy people because that's what Apple loves to do sometimes. But I just want it to work and as long as it works, I'm happy. So thank you so much for the message. Thank you for your kind words with it as well. Uh, and I hope this kind of answers your question. I know this is a bit of a different video and it's probably going to get about four views, but... Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.